with the help of benchmarking we can measure the performance of our application in this way we can determine the areas where we need optimization in this video we are going to see how we can perform benchmarking in dotnet applications hello everyone my name is ravindra let's get started first and foremost we need a console application so create one if you don't have any I already have created a console application so that we can save up some time so create one if you don't have any and here what we are going to do first of all we are going to install a package so go here right click on this project and go to manage nuget packages here we will search benchmark.net so search this package and click on it and install it click on accept and it's done so close it for now now we need to create a class here so create a class and name it benchmark projection so our class is benchmark projection and create it so here we have this class and i'm going to make it public so that's it i'm going to declare a private variable here so private data sorry private integer data it is an integer type array and here we have this array size so let's name it int array size so let's define array size 2000 okay now let's define here a method and name it public global setup and it can be anything so don't worry about this name global setup public void global setup okay and we define attribute here name it global setup so inside this method what we do we initialize any data and it runs only one time so we are going to initialize this data array here so just type here data and let's use a method here enumerable dot range and let's put zero here array size so zero comma array size and we will convert it to two array so here suppose array size equals to 10 then our data will be zero one two dot 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 two nine so we are creating a array here with the help of this enumerable dot range method so in our case we have array size thousand so here we will have this array zero one two two triple nine okay so now we will have a method i am just pasting the code here so we have this project with for loop method what we are doing here we are converting our array to squares so let me explain what we are doing here suppose our array is one two three four then we are converting that array to one into one two into two three into three and four into four so it will be one four nine and sixteen so we are doing it with this method so we are projecting our array to the square roots sorry not square roots squares so here we have result i equals to data i into data i so at the end we are converting our array from this 
to this so it is just a basic method with for loop we can do same thing with the link query so it is the method and we are doing it with link query so we are using the select method and we are passing this lambda expression here so here we are calculating x into x and it will give the same result but we are using just one line here and it is doing the job for us so it is much more simple and have less code and more readable but this code have more code and it is less readable also okay so in this video we are going to compare these two method and see their performance so we will calculate what time they are going to take and what size they are going to take in the memory so to get benchmark we are going to use a attribute here called benchmark and we are going to do same here okay now notice one thing here by default our application is set to the debug mode okay by default we use debug mode but in this application we are not going to use debug mode because this benchmark does not work with debug mode so make sure to change it to release but before that we are going to call it here in the program.cs file and let's call it where let's so type here for summary equals to benchmark runner dot run and here we are gonna paste the name of this class so copy this name and paste it here benchmark projection okay that's fine so that's it now what i have told earlier that we need to change this this build type from debug to release okay so change it from debug to release and run the code so now it has started and it is going to take a time and it take a lot of time so i'm going to pause the recording so here it is done and here is our summary and here you can see that my system configuration i am using this operating system and this cpu and this host dotnet 7.0 with x64 architecture and here we have this table which have these columns method mean error and st standard deviation stdev and here we have the details about these columns so mean means arithmetic mean of all measurements here we have this error half of 99 percent confidence interval standard deviation and it doesn't matter what it is so main thing here we have this thing mean and here it is saying one us or we can say that one microseconds so one microsecond is about 0 0.000001 second so here we have this metric we are using we are not we are using the this library is using so it is using microseconds to measuring the time so this project with for loop this method project with for loop is taking 1.361 microseconds and project with link is taking 3.387 microseconds so it is it is more than twice it is taking more than twice time so this method project with for loop is taking less time and this method is taking more time it is taking twice as the for loop more than twice uh, approximately 2.5 okay so that's it and let's close it for now so close it for now now what we are going to do here 
we are going to see how much memory it is taking so for that we need to put here just memory diagnoser so with this class we can we can check how much memory these methods are taking so let's run this code here so when we put memory diagnoser attribute on the class we have more columns now now we have this column gen 0 and allocated so here we have this new column allocated and it is taking 3.93 kb so here allocated allocated memory per single operations so it is taking 3 kilobytes per operation 3.93 kilobytes and this link operation is taking 3.98 kilobytes per operation so memory wise both are same but but with time wise both are not same so for loop is taking much less time and here we have this column Zen 0 it is saying GC generation 0 collects per thousand operations so GC means garbage collection or garbage collector generation 0 collects per thousand operations so garbage collection is running on 1.9226 seconds I guess microseconds so if we compare both methods everything have not much difference but only difference we have here is about time it is taking much less time and let's create a baseline here so we are using this method as a baseline so to do this we have to write here baseline equals to true so right here baseline equals to true that's it now this method is going to be baseline for the comparison so let's run this program now we have defined baseline method so we have more columns here so we have this column here ratio median ratio sd gen 0 sorry gen 0 was already there allocated ratio so main thing here we have this column ratio and allocated ratio this for loop method is our base method with this method we can compare these two methods so here we can see that it is taking 2.22x time than this for loop method okay and about the ratio it is taking just 1.01x more resource than the baseline method so this project with for loop is a baseline method and we are comparing other methods with the baseline so this project with link method is taking 2.22x more time than the base method and 1.01x more resource than the base method we can define more size of array so what we can do here we can put a property called params here so just type here params and inside the params we can define this size so our params will be thousand and ten thousands this code will run twice first for the array size thousand then for ten thousand so let's run this code okay and don't forget we are using the release mode here oops i am getting error here and it is saying that Remember, array size must be public if it has params attribute. So just define here public and run the code. Now it is the benchmark summary for different array sizes. So it is for array size thousand and it is for array size ten thousand. If we have the array size thousand, it is taking one point two one five milliseconds, oh, sorry microseconds, and two point eight two two microseconds, and it is doing the same thing in a similar ratio it is taking 10.149 microseconds 29.937 microseconds so we can compare here with this thing called ratio 
so here we have this ratio for thousand array size 1 to 2.33 and here we have this ratio 1 to 2.996 sorry 96 so it is taking 2.33 x time and here it is taking 2.96 time so it is pretty much similar and if we see it is taking almost similar memory so in this way we can give different input size in the benchmark dotnet library we just have to use this attribute params we can also check their official documents so it is available in github.com if we click here and go to the docs so here let's see what they are offering you can go and check out this document if you need here we just have to type benchmark.net and use this github link i'm going to push this code into github repository if you need it then you can check the link in the description box i hope you find this video helpful if you find this video helpful then hit the like button and leave a comment make sure to subscribe this channel to get more videos like this so that's it for now see you next time